here. In the last several weeks, you've seen me post some videos of different engines that we have here in the R&D lab of Element One Technologies. Now, through all those different tests, you heard roaring engines and, and uh, high RPMs, and we're dealing also in another video that's coming out about gas emissions post-combustion. That video will follow. But today, instead of posting a serious video on very sensitive subjects and issues about using hydrogen internal combustion engines that you have seen in the past, I thought that we would kind of tune it down and be a little more casual and go from this to, to this. this. Today here at the R&D lab of Element One Technologies, it's not so much R&D today, it's an R&C day, as in relax and cooking day. Several months ago, I read an article in the New York Times newspaper that kitchens and diners and restaurants and hotels were under attack because of the CO2 that is being emitted by using natural gas. Well, being a solutions company, I thought there must be a way around this and that hydrogen actually could be a solution to that emission problem, which it is in other applications as well. So what I did was I went out and bought this gas stove that is quite a nice unit. It has two elements with a big skillet area, which I like because I love cooking. Uh, living in Europe as long as I did, I learned to cook many different plates from different countries. And then being a single father, I was able to develop a vast array of different food plates to keep a growing boy interested in all the different meals. So I took this article into consideration and thought, well, I could probably come up with a solution since I already had on different engines using hydrogen, understanding the process of hydrogen combustion and how to apply different fuel delivery systems to the combustion chamber or the combustion apparatus itself. So what I have done is I tore the bottom part of this uh, stove apart and modified it to accommodate the hydrogen. Now, what you see here is a regulator that keeps the appropriate gas flow in the PSI according to the requirements of this skillet. So what I had to do was take the outgoing gas with this regulator, with the requirement of the input to cook in this large area and modify all of this to make this happen. Now, don't think you can go and do this at home and just go to a hardware store and start buying hardware and piece it all together. It does not work that way. So please do not do this at home because combustion processes that are going on underneath this skillet that are not typical to a gas stove. So please do not do this at home. I've put together a vast array of food selections that I'm going to cook on this skillet all at the same time. Now, of course, there's a different timing in the different foods. Steaks take longer than hash browns. But what I have is hash browns, eggs, bacon for a yummy breakfast, burgers with a nice, nice round steak uh, that's actually quite thick. It's three quarters of an inch thick, so it'll take a little while to cook. I won't bore you with the whole entire process, but I will check in as the process of cooking each one of these foods goes on. So I'm going to turn on the gas, set the pressure, the pressure is already set here. The flow rate through the flashback arrestor is already set. And of course, this pressure is set for the incoming gas of this stove. So I'm going to, this has a piezoelectric starter on it, just like any gas. I'm going to turn it on. It gives a little pop. That's the initial hydrogen in the manifold itself. And as you hear, that's the burning of hydrogen coming out of the manifold heating up this skillet. So what I'll do is put a little butter. Since the steak is the first one up, it takes the longest. I'll put this here in the middle. Put the butter in there as well. I'll put a little spice on here. And then I'll check on the food as it goes along. Oh yeah. It smells really good. Spice is nice. It goes down the lid. And then in a few minutes, we'll 
put the rest of the food on there so it all cooks at the same time. I, hmm, I'm smelling some amazing aromas coming out of the top of this uh, this stove. Uh, oh wow, it, it's looking quite amazing. Uh, let me throw on some bacon, hash browns in the corner, or a regular diner here, right? I've already prepared the onions and tomato for the burger. Add some salt and pepper, throw in some butter, spread them around a little bit for uh, while this food is cooking, I want to point out a couple of things about the hydrogen working with this stove in the way that I have modified this whole output of the hydrogen from the tank to the input of the stove. Now, what you see here is this flow meter and the ball is regulated at the atomic rate of hydrogen, so it gives it a precise reading. And it's bouncing between 12 and a half, 17 cubic feet per hour. Now, that is bouncing because this regulator here is not made for hydrogen, it's made for propane. The other reason that this is bouncing and not having a flow rate is the manifold that is standard on this stove is also for propane, and it's not made for hydrogen. Now, I have to modify it that manifold and a couple of the parts inside the stove to accommodate the hydrogen so we don't have a catastrophe of turning burning hydrogen in a stove. So those variables there in the equation from source to output to cooking uh, is more something that I have developed and it's not, it's not something you're going to go buy off the shelf and start putting these things together. So it's a very interesting way. We've now been cooking for several minutes. As you hear the hydrogen burning in the stove, you don't hear any pop, pop. There's no flames going on, uh, like a lot of uh, hydrogen opponents may proclaim about the dangerous explosivity of hydrogen. Well, as you can hear, that is not happening. So uh, the next time you hear something about how dangerous hydrogen is, you can see here what we're doing. This is not dangerous at all. But the footnote to that is you have to know what you're doing in the sense of developing appliances and products, be it the engines you've seen in previous uh, videos or a cooking stove like this. You have to have an expertise in designing and assembling something like this for it to work correctly and smoothly and safely with hydrogen. So please, again, don't try this at home. This is not as easy as it looks because I've got 14 years of experience of working directly with hydrogen in many different combustion environments. And so I'm kind of ahead of the curve. So we'll come back in a few minutes and check on the food. It's smelling amazing with all of those different foods cooking. When we're finished, I'll serve the, the plates up and have a go. Okay, we're back. I'm going to do a food check, and uh, oh yes, oh my god, everything is sizzling, the bacon is cooking, mm. uh, let's do some flipping here, pretty well, potatoes need to be turned over, the steak and the hamburger are doing amazingly well, as well, then I'll close down the lid, and check back with it in a few minutes. Here we are again, a few minutes later, I want to check on the food. Oh yeah! So, the other thing I want to do is do a temperature check. This is an Ames digital spot temperature uh, gauge. And I'm looking at 235, 254, 257, 234, 250. There was one jump to 270, 267, 245, and let's see how far out on the peripheral. Out on the peripheral is 237.9 and holding 238.1. Let's go out there, 230.7. Let's go to the left, 214, 215. Let's go to the front, it's 254. So we have an even temperature all the way through, which is how I try to design this system so we can cook all the different foods on the whole entire skillet. 
have been able to accomplish that with the idea from the article I read in the New York Times magazine, or the New York Times newspaper several months ago, that the kitchens can actually use hydrogen in replacement of natural gas. Now, this stove can also be put in your house, unlike a propane stove that you use at a campsite, which is what this is, is a camping stove. Uh, you don't cook indoors with the propane. With this stove, you can. With environmentalists putting pressure on the diners and hotels and restaurants uh, and kitchens, we can clearly see here that hydrogen can replace natural gas. There is no emissions in this. There's no CO2 coming out of here. So this can literally be used indoors much, much easier without all of the fuss and mess of natural gas with the big gas collectors hovering over these gigantic stoves inside of major kitchens. So as we can see, that hydrogen can replace natural gas for cooking. Okay, we're back again. I'm going to do a food check and do a video of this as well because this is exciting. It smells really good. So what have we got here? Hash browns, brown, steak brown, chicken, bacon, looking rather crispy on the meat side, and hamburger, yum. I'll be adding eggs in just a few minutes. I can see that the steak and the hamburger are very close to being finished. So now I'll put the eggs on the skillet and we'll watch them cook. Here we go with the eggs. A little salt and pepper. Eggs are cooking up really, really nice. Okay, here we are. It's food time. Oh yeah. First up is the scrambled eggs, hash browns, and the bacon. Yum, everybody loves bacon. I'm gonna close this down. Let's see how hot that is. Ooh, oh. Can you taste it? I just smells really amazing. Um, Let's take a bite and uh, see what we have here. Eggs. Hash browns. Oh. Mmm. Bacon. Oh my god. Maybe I'll open up a restaurant and you can all come to Carl's Hydrogen Kitchen. Oh god. I can't wait to dig into the burger. This is absolutely amazing. Proof in the pudding. You don't need natural gas. Okay, so here we are in the last food selection. Now that the steak is done, I'm going to turn off the stove. Uh, you'll see actually that flow ball drop because the hydrogen stops flowing because it stops feeding into the stove. Take a nice slice into that. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh God. Sorry. Big thumbs up. You can clearly see that hydrogen can replace natural gas in cooking. We will be producing more videos to show how safely and easy it is to work with hydrogen. Again, safely because you need to know how to work with it. And so this is the end of the first episode of Carl's Hydrogen Kitchen and look for the next video.